Hello, Juan in La Canada, California. See more better here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, and today I'm get to do a new type of lens. This is a polarized gradient emerald blue that is going to match the lenses that I took out of your frame. Very, very close to it. This is a Persol 3108, and I've never done this. It has the Crizol Sun Shield on the back. These are Xperio polarized lenses. You get your Essilor. Xperio Certificate of Authenticity authentic, authenticity card along with your Essilor cleaning cloth. So let's begin. First of all, I need to program this shape into the computer to store it in the database. So years from now, if you ever need new lenses for this frame, you are Secret Agent 524. I can just cut the lenses and mail them directly to you. Let me go ahead and hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic frame from me, of which I do not sell for Saul, but when you do, you get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Juan supplied the frame, so... He does pay for the lenses. Let's see. Hang on, hang on. Let's move this on to the next screen. And your pupillary distance for the right eye is 33. Let's go ahead and do that. I want to raise the optical center up just a little bit. Oop, no, let's keep the PD the same. 33. Let's move the optical center up just a little bit in this frame. And we're going to come over here, take your lenses to my Marco 101 lensometer. Spin the axis wheel to 169. Put the right lens in. Here's a cool way to test if lenses are polarized. You hear the term polar opposites. You can actually see through them when they're in front of each other, but when you rotate it 90 degrees, it goes pitch black. That's how you can tell if one lens is polarized. It's a specialized horizontal filter that blocks all glare on the horizontal meridian. When it's turned vertical, it blocks all light. So that's that lesson for today. Okay, so the power should be at, let's make sure everything's at zero. Put the power on minus one. Put the lens in. And with the gradient, I don't have to rotate. I almost know exactly where everything is. Minus one, minus 50. Let me just double check the powers. That's good. And put a couple dots on there. There we go. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Spin the fine tune knob to four. Put the power drum on minus one and a quarter. And just check everything out here. Okay. Hang on, let's see one thing. Let's see one thing. Let's turn this back to 169. And check one thing here. All right. Never hurts to double check everything. Back to four. Oh, minus one and a quarter. That's that makes a difference for everything to come in clearly. I'll tell you, a quarter cylinder is the hardest one to dot up. One fifty, one and a quarter. He has the smallest amount of astigmatism possible in the left eye, and that's always hard to detect. Okay, so the reason why I put those dots on there it tells me that's oriented. How's that for a computer effect there? blocking glare this is a glare source so i need two blocks of which i like to call them jenny from the block i need to attach a double-sided sticker of which i've got some here to each side pull the paper away to make the black side sticky now on the back is a silver button that is a magnet that's going to do its job twice today the first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet here in the arm Get everything lined up, pupillary distance, OC height, and let me mark that this is at 24. So I know where to place it in the future. Get everything lined up perfectly. Hit that button, the arm comes down, places the block onto the right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Your pupillary distance is 33.5. So I'm going to tap the plus button one time to bring that up there. Same optical center height. Grab this sticker line everything up there we go 
hit the button the arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it does all the work while i run my mouth it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own put it on your own kitchen counter then you can cut your own Xperio polarized gradient lenses and you won't need this guy anymore to do it for you the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel here that's going to grind the lens down to the final size this wheel in the center is going to place the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame let's go ahead and wake everything up 524 524 so we know we're doing that right I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen on this frame and you know what I'm not going to actually polish the let me see should I do it should I do it yeah I'll put a very light bevel on the rear surface of the frame let me go ahead and on the frame on the lens excuse me press that on there firmly now the magnet's going to do a job a second time it's going to attach itself to another magnet in the chuck or as I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck at the green arrow which is start in every language the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame first of which it is you can see as it's going around tracing that shape and then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing I could move the bevel forwards. I know the lens moved back, but if the bevel is forward, the lens gets moved back. If I move the bevel backwards, it pushes the lens out of the front. But with your prescription, I could override it. But with your prescription, you're not gonna have any edge thickness in this frame anyway. Now, if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, or plastic Hindex, plastic and Trivex cut wet water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that you see beginning to form on the lens now even though it seems to be flying off the back now I am using polycarbonate lenses polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic they are virtually unbreakable they are high impact ballistics grade lenses and have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. So if you notice your lens is completely flat, just like a nickel, if I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter on its own. Now it's going to move on to the bevel wheel to get the V shaped bevel. So it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now polarize, as I mentioned, is a specialized filter. Think of it as like Venetian blinds for your eyes. It blocks all horizontal glare. If I can come back to this screen and make it, let's see here. It blocks glare on the horizontal level. That's why when you move it, you get different effects. And it's always going to do weird things against a computer screen, but these are glare. But the same way you can skip a stone off of water, light does the same thing. It hits a flat surface and reflects back up to, into your eyes. So off of roads, off of bumpers, off of windshields, off of buildings, even on, especially wet roads or wet grass, but particularly around water. That's what it was designed to do. It's, and so now the only time it does not work is if you're in New York City and you have glare coming off a vertical column the glass buildings or something like that now if you turn your head sideways it'll block the glare because now that's horizontal but not in the vertical meridian now the other thing is we live in a digital world of LCD screens which is a glare source so there's times that your cell phone when looking at it may seem dark so essentially take your cell phone if this were your cell phone and it looks dark just break that 180 meridian you'll be able to see it so that's the same thing your GPS just turn your head a little bit to the side you'll be able to see it better now when you're at gas bump pumps again those are usually again a glare source and everything will be black you won't be able to see the screen when you're pumping gas so literally just turn your head tilt your ear towards one shoulder left or right and you'll be able to the gas pumps will be clear actually I want to see one thing there clean that off the edge of the lens Take your lens, tuck it in the outside corner, press down, and it snaps right in. Let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. The Press that on there firmly. 
hit the green arrow which is start in every language just like before the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses once again just to make sure it's the lens is large enough to fit into the frame and you can see as it's going around tracing the shape and then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it's measuring the thickness of the lens of which you have no edge thickness whatsoever that's why i use the thinner lighter weight lenses and of course with your prescription in this frame that's going to help it out too so now that the left lens is about to begin cutting i can go ahead and continue to work on the right lens let's go ahead and take this off throw that in there take the sticker off add it to my collection and let me dry the lens off a little bit more so there's no water on it I'm going to put it in just above that black dot, which is your optical center. Spin the fine tune knob back to 169. Put the lens in just above that black dot and read the prescription. And I am getting minus one, exactly on one. That's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. You're on the it starts at a quarter, well actually it starts at zero and goes up from there in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1. So you're on the fourth rung of the ladder. You are nearsighted. Without your glasses on, everything is much too large. That's why there is a minus sign. Your lenses will minify this with your glasses off is too large. So when you put your glasses on, this becomes the correct size that it should be. Now you have, once it's the correct size, you have two steps of astigmatism correction. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. You don't freak out when you hear that, and that's all that is. So once it's the correct size, astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. It's a second curve on your lens. You have one curve going this way, and you have a second curve here. That's how we line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. When we line them up at the one sit at the meridian of 169, 169 on a scale of 1 to 80. Let's go ahead and check for your astigmatism. And we end up at minus 150, exactly halfway between 1 and 2. Remember high school algebra, you add two like signs together? Yeah, no one does. So let's use today's term. Someone borrowed a dollar from you and then they borrowed another 50 cents. They would owe you a dollar 50. That's where we're at, 150 in the red. Now your left eye, you need five steps of spherical correction to make everything the correct size, but you only need one step of astigmatism correction, but we're still gonna end up at a combined value of 150, same power as you have for the left, um, excuse me, for the right that you do for the left. That's actually very rare. This last number could be anywhere from zero to 180. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. Although on a, a straight line, zero to 90 to 180, for your right eye, you're on the 169th meridian, so you're 11 degrees away from 180. Your left eye, you're at 4 degrees away from the 180 meridian. So really, there's only 7 degrees of difference of Kevin Bacon. No, um, 7 degrees of, of separation in, in your astigmatic correction, which, you know, is interesting to me and no one else. But yeah, don't worry about it. Nothing to concern yourself with. Let's dry everything off. Go ahead and pop the left lens in if it will go this first time around. And it does. Let's go ahead and take the block off. Dry the block off. Get that used. Put the sticker on top there. And we're going to come down here and place it over that. Hopefully you can see the black dot, your pupillary distance. Move that back to 4, the meridian for your left eye. Put that in. Read the power. And I am getting minus 1 and a quarter. So that's the fifth step, one and a quarter. You have one step of astigmatism correction, the smallest amount you can possibly have. And again, we end up at 150. So that is cut perfectly. I couldn't do a better job if I had done it myself. So your pupillary distance, 33 for the right eye, 33.5 for the left, a combined value of 66.5. Actually, I may have to do it without that. Use the wall as a background. Place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens, and then when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 66.5, so that is cut perfectly. I do want to check the optical center height of 24. We're going to the middle of the frame, not the bottom of the lens, but the middle of the plastic, and we're getting 24, so that is cut perfectly. So this is the part in every video that as I clean your lens, I mention that you get free shipping anywhere in the U.S., of which La Canada, California is still considered part of. 
course, I don't know where it's at. Is it, is it west of the San Andreas Fault? <laughs> but uh, it may drop into the ocean, become its own island one day. And if so, I still ship there for free. Move the camera so all this is in there. But when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that they could be too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And I'm no exception. I'm part of that 80%. But because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. One, two, and the bottom of the frame is three. Even though these are your frames, they're, he told me they're brand new because the original heavy glass lenses are in there. So this is going to be lighter weight and safer with the unbreakable impact resistant lenses. But I put them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and put them on the counter, they wobble, but they sit level on me. I'm going to put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and that neither one is askew like that. Now, Persol is one of the oldest frame companies in the world. They have a very unique hinge design. There is no springed hinge. It's built right into the frame. How cool is that? That is nice engineering. If anyone out there has a Prasol frame and you want lenses, just mail it to me. So let's compare the original lenses to what I put in there. Pretty, pretty close to have polarized lenses. Now, are these polarized? Let's do the test. Yes, they are. So, double check it against what you have. Polarized. How about that? So, if you like what you've seen, just please subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. You can follow me on Twitter at freerxlenses. Um, if you have a question, you can always leave a, a question at the website on the contact me button, or you can email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Or better yet, I've been asking everyone to leave a comment down below in the comment section. That way other people can benefit by reading your question or comments. I field test every cleaning cloth that I ship so that you can't tell me that it won't clean your lenses. When you get this and you see those wrinkles in there, you know that I've already used it to clean your lenses and that it works. So, everyone out there watching, I do thank you. Juan, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut a polarized emerald Xperio emerald blue gradient lenses with a backside Crizol sunshield for your Persol. Where's my flashlight? Your Persol 3108 color 960 in the 49 eye size and everyone else has got the chance to see how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses